This heating season, families across Minnesota will have to make some very difficult choices. I'm not talking about the choice between skiing at Lutzen or Spirit Mountain or perhaps out west somewhere. I'm talking about the choice between paying the heating bill or the health care bill. I'm talking about the choice between paying the heating bill or the house payment or the rent. When families have to choose between home energy and other basic needs, we are living in what's called fuel poverty. Fuel poverty affects 40 million Americans every year. That's one out of eight of us. In the most extreme cases, fuel poverty presents the impossible choice between heating and eating. The reality of fossil fuel dependency is that our low-income friends, family members, neighbors are most gravely affected when, not if, energy costs go up, because the less money we make, the greater percentage of that income we have to devote to the basic need of heat and power. You know, the demographics of fuel poverty are quite diverse. The geography is very broad, but unfortunately, fuel poverty is a social ill that's not yet on the social radar. Fortunately, there is a federal program that pays low-income families bills. It's called energy assistance. Perhaps you've heard of it. It's sometimes called heating assistance or fuel assistance, but technically it's the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. However, the price tag for this partial safety net in the state of Minnesota alone is more than $100 million every year. Minnesota, Montana, Michigan, Maine, Massachusetts, and many more, every year we spend $5 billion taxpayer dollars putting a Band-Aid on a wound that needs a tourniquet. We're hemorrhaging public resources without actually providing a solution or empowering families. Energy assistance dollars, they, they don't even flow directly to low-income families, nor do they address the root causes of low-income fuel poverty. Although energy assistance is very much an important program, energy assistance dollars flow directly to utilities. Energy assistance, frankly, is as much an entitlement for utilities as it is for low-income families. In fact, it's yet another fossil fuel subsidy. All of this really begs the question, is energy assistance providing a solution or is it postponing a solution? I mean, what's the return on investment for energy assistance? It, it's, it, it simply doesn't have one. I mean, there's a hole in the bucket. So families that are living in energy assistance, there, there are, of course, important social benefits. Families like this one, this is a home that's right here in our region. In fact, it is 20 miles that way. We all pay this household's energy bills, and that's a good thing. Because families that receive energy assistance, low-income families that receive energy assistance are much more likely to have positive health and education outcomes than those that don't. So make no mistake about it, energy assistance is very much an important service. But as a region, as a state, and as a nation, we can do so much better. We can provide solar assistance. Solar energy for low-income families on the Federal Energy Assistance Program is a long-term, a clean, and a domestic solution. The future of energy assistance is here today. Solar is the future of energy assistance in a nationally unique endeavor based right here in the Brainerd Lakes area. We're providing solar assistance, and solar assistance is changing the national dialogue about how we serve low-income families, how we help low-income families that are grappling with fuel poverty. Using a combination of solar heating and solar electric technologies, we're proving that solar energy is a cost-effective and a practical alternative to conventional energy assistance. So check this out. Over the course of the next 10 years, a family here in Minnesota that receives energy assistance can receive up to $15,000 in utility payments on their behalf, $15,000. A similar investment 
in solar energy would eliminate that family's need for energy assistance. Programs like energy assistance are not intended to create some sort of dependency, yet we see a lot of intergenerational dependency on energy assistance. Programs like energy assistance are intended to help families out of a challenging situation. Solar assistance is doing just that. Now, I'm not suggesting that solar is some sort of cure-all or silver bullet, but I am suggesting that it's part of the golden buckshot. Now, a lot of people often ask, you know, why and how did you start delivering solar energy to low-income families? Well, I actually grew up in a family that was intermittently dependent on energy assistance, so I benefited from the program as a child. But more recently, when I was on my own, I was going to school without two nickels to rub together. It was very humbling, but I needed energy assistance again. But I wanted an alternative to the handout. I wanted a hand up. So I called my energy assistance provider and I said, hey, would you provide a, a no or even a low interest loan so I can buy a solar energy system? Well, they said no. And I said, oh. But serendipitously, right about the same time, I heard of a family that was tearing a solar heating system off of the roof of a home that they had just recently purchased and throwing it in the dumpster. Man, I mean, we throw a lot of stuff away in this country, but a functional solar energy system, really? So please don't tell anyone. But <laughs> after just a little bit of this, I found this. I literally found a solar energy system in a dumpster, and with a little help from my friends, OK, a lot of help from friends and family, because at that time, I didn't even know which end of a hammer to use. We installed it on our home, and it saved my family so much money that we didn't need energy assistance. So that was the aha moment. If this can work for my family in northern Minnesota, then this represents a new model of low-income energy assistance that can empower families coast to coast. So since those dumpster diving days, I'm pleased to say that we have empowered almost 500 families in 10 states, and we are just getting started. All of these families, all of these families now have the means to generate their own energy on site. That fosters not only resilience, but pride. Now, when we started this effort back in 2000, we were a lone wolf. We were giving solar energy systems and delivering them to the poorest communities in the state of Minnesota when solar energy was only for the upper echelons of society. But today, it's a national chorus. There are hundreds of organizations that are using solar energy to address low-income fuel poverty. We are now part of a national movement and transformation to end the renewable divide. Now, I just want to pause for a moment because I'm sure a lot of you are asking yourselves right now, yeah, but what about energy efficiency? Absolutely. Energy efficiency first and foremost. Everyone here knows that the least expensive uh, kilowatt hour or BTU or unit of heat is the one that you actually never have to use. So in partnership with weatherization agencies, we're delivering solar energy after energy efficiency measures. And together, energy efficiency and solar can dramatically reduce the energy burden for low-income families. But all across this country, weatherization agencies are serving low-income families. I mean, literally from Alaska to Florida, from Hawaii to Maine, community action agencies, or CAPS, are toiling day in and day out on behalf of low-income families. And, you know, whether you live in a mobile home down the street or an affordable housing project in Chicago or Boston or Seattle, you, as a low-income family, are served by a community action agency. Well, solar assistance is scaling from Portland, Maine to Portland, Oregon within this existing network. Now, just imagine if every community action agency in the nation had a community solar array like this one. Just imagine if rather than you paying low-income families' energy bills year after year, this met the energy needs for our low-income neighbors in this region for good. That's what we call community solar for community action. And community solar for community action is happening right here, right now, in north central Minnesota, and it's an idea that's worth spreading, and it is. You know, we can do so much better than this. We don't need to subsidize this on behalf of low-income families. Energy assistance does not provide choice to low-income families. 
Energy assistance is certainly not environmentally responsible. Energy assistance is not fiscally responsible, but most importantly, energy assistance does not solve the problem. So we have to ask ourselves, do we want energy assistance or do we want solar assistance? We need solar carve-out, a solar carve-out within the National Low-Income Home Energy Assistance Program to provide a clean, a lasting, and a domestic solution to low-income fuel poverty. Because solar is not only a tool to address our energy needs as a society and our climate concerns, solar energy is an important tool in the fight against poverty. Thank you.